Welcome back, everybody, to Toronto Today here on The Parlay. I'm your host, Luca, alongside my co-host, Michael. we got another action-packed show for you on this Wednesday. We're going to talk a little Leafs, talk a little Raptors, get into some Canadian talent. And then, of course, we're going to end, as we end every show, with our best bet of the night. Speaking of best bets, I was victorious with mine the other night. For the first time, I touched over-unders, and I actually got it right. So I hit the uh, over in the Knicks-Timberwolves game. The line was uh, 213 and a half, and the final score was 222 total points. So my best bet record is now five and three, looking to keep that one rolling. How did you do, uh, Mike? I was looking good until the game started, Luca. <laughs> I was looking good until the game started. You know, Florida went with their their backup goaltender in Spencer Knight, and I think that kind of just threw everything off. And unfortunately. Back in the losers column, man. We're at, sitting at three and five right now. So hopefully I can bounce back today. Yeah, it's all good, man. We, uh, you know, sometimes we stumble, sometimes <laughs> we win. It's it's the nature of sports betting. You can't bat a thousand, that's for sure. All right, let's uh, talk Leafs to begin the broadcast. They're going to be in action tonight against the Rangers at MSG. Always a tough place to play. The Leafs quite the favorite here on the road. They're um, minus 160 on uh, the money line, and uh, they're minus uh, minus one and a half on the puck line to win. So one and a half goals if you want to lay that on the Leafs. Um, yeah, how do you like their chances going up against a Rangers team that's been playing pretty well? I mean, they're six three and one in their last ten. The Leafs, of course, are seven two and one in their last ten. So both these teams coming in generally hot. And um, the over-under for this one is set at five and a half goals. So maybe Vegas is tempting us to sprinkle some money on the over, considering these two teams, they've been playing well lately. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a tough one because whenever the Leafs head into MSG, it's typically a really, a really tough game. And I feel like they're pretty significant favorites at MSG. As you said, one and a half point favorites on the puck line and minus 160 straight up on the money line yeah are we surprised to kind of see those significant odds in the least favor i am a little bit you know but as you said both of these teams are playing really good hockey uh the rangers in particular at msg i mean they're they're as solid as they come and you mentioned that that over under i mean we have to take a look at that goaltending matchup in net it's two of the best goalies right now in the nhl and jack campbell and igor shesterkin yeah and it's gonna be tough to beat either of those guys so honestly with that five and a half i know it's tempting but it's i don't see it going gonna be a goal fest tonight i don't think it'll be a goal fest tonight between these two two teams who typically are really good at keeping the puck out of the net usually when you think uh yeah you have an incredible goalie matchup that means less goals but usually flips the other side of that and all of a sudden you have a scoring fest i could see this being though like a a a three two game just barely under that uh that you know goal total so yeah i would probably ride with the under as well with you mike but in terms of uh you know that one and a half i would definitely take the rangers because uh, i do think this is going to be a one goal game i mean you look at the leafs they're two and three against the rangers in their last five and MSG is always a tough place to play. If this was at home, you know, different story. There's not a crowd involved, but those fans, they could get rowdy as we've seen on social media. So I think this is going to be a very good game. Wouldn't be surprised if the Rangers actually even pull this upset. So I'd be willing to take the one and a half, not quite drop money on the uh, the Rangers money line. But I think this is going to be a fantastic battle. But this to me is just Vegas showing the Leafs a a ton of respect similar to what they've been doing with the Raptors the Leafs have been a pretty safe bet for the most part other than a couple hiccups here and there and they're nine and two straight up in their last 11 games against an Eastern Conference opponent so I think this is Vegas's way of just saying you know the Leafs they just think they're head and shoulders than a lot of teams in the East I know there's not a huge gap between them and the Rangers who have been playing pretty well this season but I mean, there's still heavy favorites going into this one. So expect a lot of people to drop that that puck line perhaps in this. And uh, yeah, look for the Leafs to have their way with the Rangers. I just just can't put faith though in the Leafs covering that. So like I said, I'll I'll go uh, Rangers plus one and a half and under goals. I think those would be my two plays for this. Yeah, and as you mentioned, the, the Leafs are two and three against the Rangers in their last five. And three of those games were actually one goal games. 
There you go. So it's always sort of a, a tight battle between these two teams. Um, just circling back a little bit to the, the over-under, I throw out a couple stats here. The total has gone under in four of Toronto's last six games when playing at MSG. The total has gone under in six of the Rangers' last seven games. And the total has gone under again in seven of the Rangers' last eight games at MSG. So it's it's leaning in a, a, like it will be a, a tight scoring matchup. But as you kind of mentioned there off the bat, is we, we think that that'll happen and then the complete opposite will happen. It'll just be yeah. floodgates open all night. Um, but I think the, the first period will be important in determining that. If the first period is a tight matchup like we're expecting, then that's probably how the rest of the game will play out. I'm expecting a really good hockey game between these two teams. The question is, are you going to lay some money on Austin Matthews, who's been on a tear scoring on the road? He's scored in 10 straight games on the road, and he's actually just one game shy of the NHL record for most consecutive games scoring on the road. Ironically, currently held by former Ranger Pavel Burry and Steve Iserman. So that's very tempting. Is Matthews going to accomplish this on the road at MSG? I mean, I would be willing to go Austin Matthews anytime goal. I mean, you'd be pretty, you know, I would say dumb if you don't because he's just been on that big of a tear that you got to ride with the hot hand at <laughs> this point. Yeah, and just, just looking that up right now, he's plus 100 to score an anytime goal. And to be honest, that's actually better than some of the odds he's been given lately to score a goal because everyone's picked up on it by now. I mean, he has 25 goals in 33 games this season. He became the first Leaf in team history to start his career with six straight 25 plus goal seasons. Unreal. And this guy right now, I know he's he's two goals back of Alex Ovechkin for the NHL lead, but I'll say it again. He is the best goal scorer in the NHL right now. He's the hottest goal scorer in the National Hockey League right now. And we know Matthews, he loves the big stage. He loves yeah. the spotlight. So what's a bigger stage to do this than at Madison Square Garden to tie Pavel Bure, who you know used to play for the Rangers in at MSG in New York, in New York City, on Broadway. Let's uh, let's make it happen. I'm, I'm with you there. I'm, I'm gonna say Matthews does tie that record today and scoring his 11th straight game on the road. Yeah, it's the perfect stage for it. And when it comes to records, you definitely know these athletes look into it. They know what they're about to accomplish or how many goals or points they are away from doing something. So it's definitely on his mind. And the competitor in Matthews, I think, is really going to show itself tonight. And again, under those bright lights, there is going to be a crowd. There is going to be a scene. Matthews is going to show up and he's going to do it in a big way. So I'm, I'm with you on that too, buddy. We'll see if that can cash in. We're going to switch gears now to the other Toronto team in action, and they're also going to be on the road. They're going to be taking on a pretty good Mavs team that are starting to get their, their strive going a little bit. Raptors, Mavericks, Mavericks, four-point favorites at home here. The Raptors are 6-4 and four against the Mavs in their last 10. That is straight up. And the Raptors, like we've said many times on the show, a pretty safe bet against the uh, against the spread. They're twelve and four against the spread in their last sixteen games. So can they keep that going here against the Mavs and Luka Doncic? They've lost three of their last four games, but two of those games were hard-fought battles against against very good teams. And I think tonight they're facing another really good team right now. I think the Mavericks are something like nine and one straight up in their last 10 games. Yeah, very hard. Chris Stapps, yeah, exactly. Chris Stapps Porzingis is playing like he was supposed to play in New York. He's having a hell of a season. Luka Doncic, who actually I think is, is having a little bit of a down year, he's still Luka Doncic. And he's still one of the best players in the league right now. And it's finally, we're finally starting to see Dallas kind of hit their groove, something they've been trying to do for several years with Luka. And I'm excited to kind of see how this matchup plays out because it's a very good measuring stick for the Raptors. Another one, another good test for this team. And I know their, their schedule hasn't been really favorable to them, but the one bright side heading into this matchup is they kind of love playing, playing the Dallas Mavericks. In particular, they kind of love playing Dallas in Dallas. Um, 
or just against Dallas, sorry, not in Dallas. In Dallas, they're struggling, but against Dallas straight up, they are nine and four in their last 13 games. But yeah. unfortunately, as I touched on there, five and 15 straight up in their last 20, one playing on the road in Dallas. Do I like the Raptors chances? Honestly, it's going to be tough. It's another tough one that I have no idea which way it's going to go. I think the timing of this really hurts the Raptors. If you gave me the Mavs last month, yeah, smash the Raptors all day. But just because the Mavs are starting to get healthy, everybody's back. They're playing ridiculous right now. Like you said, nine and one in their last 10 straight up. I think this is going to be Dallas's game. I, I do think they're going to win this game and cover the number. Now, that being said, the Raptors have been a really good bet against Western Conference opponents, six and one against the spread in their last seven. But I, I just think this West Coast trip, it's its getting tougher and tougher, right? You get that hard fought win against the Bucks, but of course you have the Bucks number. Then you go play in Miami, another hard fought game. And now you have to play Dallas. And the biggest thing to me, Mike, where I can see the Raptors run into problems is their starters. I know they had the day off yesterday, but they have been logging heavy, heavy minutes. We saw in that Miami game, OG, Siakam, Fred, plus 40 minutes. They're going to be taking on a Mavs team that is one of those teams that, again, relies on their bench. And the Raptors can't say the same thing. So this is going to be another opportunity for the Raptors bench to show something. And I'm talking outside of Chris Boucher. And if that can happen, I can see the Raptors keeping this thing close and pulling up, you know, a little bit of an upset win here. But I, I don't know. I, I just don't think the Raptors are going to have enough gas in the tank to go up against Dallas. And another thing is, if Luka Doncic, who is a superstar in my opinion, if he goes off and has his typical Luka Doncic game, he's starting to get hot a little bit, had an amazing game against the Grizzlies when they snapped their winning streak. It's going to be, it might be a long night for the Raptors. So the Raptors have already lost to the Mavs this season. That was back in Toronto. And now this is going to be the second time these two teams meet. So I think the timing of it is just very bad. You got a hot team coming in and you got the Raptors who just have so many minutes logged on some of their main guys so I don't think that's going to be a, a good recipe for them yeah and a four point spread is not that big for the Mavericks to cover it's a, another kind of tempting game where you go Mavericks but the Raptors have been so good against the spread and of late and finding different ways to cover that even that Miami game as we talked about like they could have easily covered that spread um, but yeah, you're bang on there. I want to see what Nick Nurse does with his rotation tonight. Does he spread yeah. out the minutes a little bit more? Is he going to go, go once again to those main six guys, sprinkle on a, a little bit of Justin Champagne? I, I want to see kind of how this plays out because you got to think those minutes are going to catch up to those guys eventually. Exactly. Yeah, sure. They're, they're, they're young. They're young. Absolutely. They, I'm sure they have a lot of life in their legs, but it's a, it's a long season. It's a grueling season, especially with the congested schedule. And yeah, I think Nick Nurse has to spread as rotation, but if you're trying to win games, can he afford to do that? So it's an interesting uh, kind of dilemma Nick Nurse is in right now. We'll kind of see how that plays out. Maybe he, uh, as we touched on last episode, he just kind of forces Masai's hand and go and, you know, making Masai go out and get the team some help. Well, you keep can't you can keep running all these six or seven guy rotations. It's gonna catch up to you. You simply can. You have to have more of a bench. And if the Raptors are gonna have that same strategy tonight, where they're gonna rock, you know, just a Chris Boucher and maybe a little bit of Champagne, I find it very hard that they're gonna win. They gotta play some other guys. They gotta get other production. You know, a, a speed high loop. This has got to be a game where he gets a shooting going. So we'll, we'll see what happens. But if the Raptors do rely on playing those shorter rotations, I don't think they're going to win these games against very good competition, especially these deep teams that, uh, you know, can be you both ways with their starters and their bench. Just another uh, quick uh, point about this game. The over-under is set at 206 and a half points. The under has uh, gone in five of the Raptors' last five games. So this is an empty under. And, and also, yeah, in, in, in Dallas's last five, the under has been under in their, in their last five. So this is a game where Vegas is tempting you to take that under. But, I mean... The line's set pretty low, like 206 and a half points. I could see this going over. This is, I think, a, a classic example of you look at both these teams' track records, you look at their last five games, okay, the unders come in, maybe you go the other way here. 
yeah i mean but when you're betting against these uh these odds i mean i think you just kind of got to go with with history here and five games in a row for both teams it's it's tough to kind of bet against that especially when the odds aren't insanely in that favor i know the under is actually over under is actually pretty low today yeah really and low. perhaps it, it will be but it's just tough to go against that uh that history there yeah it's just funny how uh they set these lines based on history and then sometimes you ride with the stat you ride with the number and then the the complete opposite happens so yeah. we'll see if that's a classic case <laughs> we'll keep an eye out on that over under because that to me is more intriguing than the actual spread so yeah we'll see how that plays out all right let's talk uh canadian talent as we do every day on this show we're gonna start with uh mark delgado mike what do you got for us there yeah, so this is a Toronto FC reference, and sources have told me that Toronto FC will be trading Mark Delgado to the Los Angeles Galaxy. And that is, of course, the team where former Toronto FC manager, coach Greg Vanny now coaches at. And it's a pretty significant move. I mean, Delgado, at just 26 years old, he was ranked fourth all time in Toronto FC appearances. 225 appearances in all competitions. So this is a guy who is an MLS veteran. Toronto FC just actually signed him to a long-term contract, but with new manager Bob Bradley coming into the helm, he's identified the club perhaps needs something different there in the middle of the park. And Greg Vanny has scooped up his, his former protege. I mean, this is a guy that Vanny used to absolutely love. He used to sing his praises. And it's going to be interesting kind of how that how he utilizes Mark Delgado moving forward. So in return, I'm hearing TSC are getting allocation money, more money to kind of spend towards their salary cap. And it gives them more flexibility to perhaps make some future moves. But it's definitely a, a as we touched on a lot, a turning of the page this offseason and Delgado going out the door is is another kind of step in that direction. So we're gonna see a completely different looking Toronto FC side come. Uh, the start of 2022. Did you purposely wear the TFC jacket because we're going to talk about Mark Delgado or or what? <laughs> Actually, no. I just I, I liked it. I just threw it on. So no, it looks no. good, buddy. I like it. I like it. <laughs> Thanks, it took buddy. me uh, 17 minutes into the show to realize you're even wearing it. <laughs> <laughs> I got kind of the half logo cut off, so yeah. maybe that's why. But yes, this is absolutely a TFC uh, apparel. I like it. All right, let's talk Dennis Shapovalov. He was incredible. Um, well, he got a little bit of a scare. I mean, Shapo at one point, it wasn't looking good for him. Uh, he was down 2-1 against uh, Soon Wu, but he battled back. You got to give the Canadian kid credit. Winning his matchup in a five-set thriller, 7-6, 6-7, 6-7, 7-5, and then 6-2 in the final set showing his composure he battled back and then comfortably took that final set to uh or that final match to win uh, in five sets and you look at chapeau now i mean he's plus uh 8, to win the australian open but it's not going to get easy for him he's going to be taking on american uh, opelka um who's ranked 23rd so uh, that's going to be a great matchup. We'll see how Chapo does there. But yeah, it, it was a very entertaining game. I, I watched half of it. I mean, it, it went on really, really late. But um, <laughs> when I stopped watching it live, yeah, Chapo was down 2-1 in that, you know, in that fourth set. And I was happy to see that he ended up winning this thing because it would have been, I think, a, a pretty big disappointment for him to you know lose here so early into the tournament especially since we've been raving on and on about him so I'm glad he was able to pull through and sometimes you need these long grueling matches early on to kind of regain that a sense of awareness and that sense of confidence that you're, you're able to get through push through and and be and, and get victorious I mean tennis is one of those sports where you're down early and it could really you know do a number on you especially when you play in like these three four hour matches you really got to have that endurance to to come through especially when you're down early so i thought that was huge uh, a true testament to his character his his fight his willingness to never give up and i was glad to see that he was able to get the victory uh so now he does have that next matchup coming up and we'll see how he does there and then uh, felix plays tonight uh, against Fokina and uh, that should be a very good one as well Felix is the uh, favorite tonight so uh, yeah I think uh, 
you know, like we we're talking about last uh, last show, the uh, the tennis side, the men's side, looking very promising at this point. I mean, you gotta like Felix's chances. Hopefully, he can come out with a uh, victory tonight, and then Chapo, it's gonna be tough going up against his uh, next opponent. But I could see him pull that one out with the upset. Yeah, it's it, it's interesting because Chapo, when he started this tournament, it was a, a four set, you know, victory. This one, it went all the way to five sets, which is. You know, yeah, sure. It's good to go through these these adversaries early on in your tournament, but that also that, that takes a toll on you. Um, it's never easy to kind of continue to rack up sets and whatever. And it's actually interesting that his odds yesterday were plus sixty six hundred to win the Open, but today they've gone up to plus eight thousand because I guess he endured that insane, you know, match. Yeah. Um, I'm happy to see him kind of pull through and. Yeah, Pelka's going to be tough. He, he is going to be tough. It, the odds yeah. right now are really close in that match. Shapo's only a slight favorite at minus 125. So we'll, we'll see. It's like Shapo's ranked 14th, Opelka's ranked 23rd. And the way that Shapo's playing, it's I'm not too convinced right now. I'm not, I'm not yeah. too convinced. But if he can kind of get an easy game here, maybe perhaps three, four sets, like you never know. He gains confidence, and when Chapo's hot, he's one of the best players in the world. But speaking of one of the best players, as you mentioned, Felix Azur Aliassim playing tonight, so that'll be exciting. And he's minus 350 against the, the Spaniard he's facing. So yeah. I'm expecting Felix kind of have a bit of an easier one than his opening matchup, but we'll kind of see how these play out. So uh, not the best start at the Open, but it could be a lot worse. Yeah, it's not how you win, it's if you win. And uh, we're rooting for uh, both Chapo and Felix to pull through and have a deep run at the Aussie Open. All right, as uh, we promised at the beginning of the show, we're going to end with our best bets for this Wednesday night. See if Mike can get back on the uh, in the win uh, column. What do you got for us tonight, man? <laughs> yeah, let's try and bounce back. And tonight I'm, I'm going to go back to the association, the NBA, because it's been doing me pretty well. And I'm actually going to be taking, surprise, surprise, the Los Angeles Lakers wow. to cover a five-point spread against the Indiana Pacers. Listen, I think things have kind of changed since LeBron went public on Twitter and decided to apologize for the way that the team is playing. <laughs> and, you know, we saw them bounce back right away against Utah and pick up a win against Utah. And now they're going to be welcoming a Pacer side into Los Angeles, into the, what is it, Crypto.com arena. And it's a side that's lost nine of their last 10 games. They also lost center Miles Turner to an injury that'll see him out past the trade deadline next couple of weeks. Yeah. And, you know, the Lakers are playing, they're playing a lot better than they were uh, just a couple nights ago, let's say, and uh, maybe even earlier in the season. You know, Malik Monk has really picked it up as well for that team. And, of course, LeBron is playing like he's 25 again. So I'm taking the Lakers here to cover that five-point spread at home. Yeah, it's funny. I was uh, ready to take the Lakers with my pick, so that's good I did it, just so we have uh, different picks for tonight. But I do like that Lakers pick. I think... That's great value. I expected the line to be a lot higher. The Lakers are at home. Indiana, they're struggling. Turner's out now. And it's interesting to see how the Lakers now play. Because was that win, that pretty big win against the Jazz, who did have Gobert back, was that the turning point for their season? A lot of people are saying it may be, or maybe it's just a flash in the pan. But that was a really resounding win for the Lakers. I did not expect them to do that against the Jazz. And that poster dunk that Westbrook had against Gobert was that the turning point for the Lakers season and their success so we'll see because yeah it's not too often LeBron publicly comes out and apologizes for how poorly his team is playing so uh, very you know, he takes that, that personally and let me ask you then Luca what strayed you away from making that bet just because it's the Lakers and I gotta see, <laughs> I gotta see more of a sample size of if I'm right about that turning their season before I confidently roll with that and for some reason the line being that low I started thinking maybe it could be a trap the Lakers let, let them prove it to me again before I put more faith in them so if the Lakers are able to comfortably win tonight and cover that spread I might be back betting on Lakers games Mike I'll be back. <laughs> the Lakers bandwagon. So what do you yeah. got for me tonight? 
All right, let's uh, let's move on to my best bet. I'm actually going to be rolling with a hot team. I'm going to be taking the Cavaliers, just money line, on the road against Chicago. And I know this could be viewed as uh, a very risky bet, but at the same time, the Cavaliers, they've been playing very good basketball. They've won five in a row. Their offense is clicking on all cylinders, and they're meeting a Bulls team. They do not look like the same Bulls team that we talked about just a week ago on the show. They are struggling right now. And of course, they have had Zach Levine sidelined. Lonzo Ball is dealing with the same injuries. So injuries have completely hampered this team. Now, the good news, if you're a Bulls fan, Alex Caruso is going to return to the lineup tonight. So that's definitely going to help a suspect Bulls defense that has not been playing good over the last couple of, uh, over the, the past week. But I just think the Bulls not having Levine and, and Lonzo Ball, they, they're really thin right now with their backcourt. You cannot put everything on DeMar DeRozan. And we have seen this Bulls team struggle to score the basketball. Vucevic has been playing great in light of the injuries, but I just don't think they have enough juice there to go up against the Cavs team that they've been playing great on both sides of the ball and that offense especially. I mean, Garland. You got to start talking about him as being an all-star. He's playing like one right now. He has been incredible to watch. And despite not having Rubio and dealing with their own adversities and dealing with their own injuries, the Cavs have been a great surprise story. They've been a great story in general for this season. And I think they're only a couple games back, one and a half games back of first. It's incredible. If they win tonight against the Bulls, they'll get even closer to the top of the standings. Yeah, I'm buying into this Cavs hype right now. I think they're they're going to win tonight just because they're running into a Bulls team that have a lot of injury problems, and they're in a rut right now. So give me the Cavs, money line. I'll go with that. They're actually the, the favorite on the road. And yeah, I love how you're singing the Cavs praises because they deserve it. They talk about the Colin Sexton injury, the Ricky Rubio one. I mean, this is a team that no one really anticipated to kind of be up here right now, and they've just prevailed kind of all season. They've done this all year, and it's, it's or I guess people around the league are finally starting to take notice of what this team can offer. I like them. Evan Mobley is looks like he's legit. Jared Allen is really coming to his own in Cleveland, establishing himself as a, a force in the, in the inside. So an all-around team that you can't really root against, especially with uh, how much they've been through over the last couple of years. And in terms of the Bulls, it's kind of similar to the Raptors, where if they have one, two of their starters out of the lineup, they look like they're a completely different team. Yeah. And it's 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 tough because those are two guys who are very key playmakers for this team. They like to have the ball in their hands a lot. So when you lose both of your backcourt, it's it like I said, it's just it's super tough to really overcome that. And if they're both out tonight, then yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you there. I like that pick. Yeah, I mean, you're missing your best playmaker in Lonzo Ball and another great pure scorer in, in Levine. So I just think they're going to have trouble scoring against a Cavs defense that has been one of the better defenses in the NBA. So yeah, I, I like the Cavs. I like what they got going on. And I'm a big fan of Evan Mobley. I remember I was uh, hoping that the lottery gods favored the Raptors to get an earlier pick because I really wanted Mobley, but I'm not complaining now that the Raptors, of course, <laughs> have Scotty Barnes. But Mobley is an absolute stud. I think he's definitely going to go down as one of the best from the draft class. All yeah. right, that will conclude another edition of Toronto Today here on The Parlay. As always, thank you so much for watching. You can catch a show all over social media and be sure to leave us a nice review on uh, Apple uh, Podcasts and you can get this wherever you get your podcasts. We come to you Monday through Friday talking about Toronto sports and more. On behalf of myself and Mike, we're signing off. Have a great night. Good luck with your bets and we'll catch you all again tomorrow.